Wild here from 3++ and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be covering a model review uh, for in video form this time around. Uh, we're going to be covering Father Lucant, uh, the Perforator, the Reciprocator, and the Eradicator. And we'll be covering all four of them together because of how similar the, the uh, three units are as well as the fact that, well, especially with Father Lucant, they have incredible synergy together. So, uh, let's go over and uh, cover Father Lucant first. First up here, we're going to have Father Lucant, who is the last Warcaster that has come out for Convergence. As you can tell, unlike the other models that have previously come out, he is on a large base, which normally would leave um, uh, them all to exposure to being shot at, requiring some type of unit with shield guard. However, that uh, particular weakness is covered thanks to uh, Field Marshal along with two Warjacks who have Shield Guard built in. And we'll go over his stat line real quick. And as you can see here, sorry for the glare, he is, he is a speed six, he has speed six, he is strength nine with a mat of six and a rat of three, so all of his vectors are going to have the same stat line as well. His defense and armor is pr is very good for a uh, for someone who can take a lot of punishment, and he also has Pathfinder too, so that really allows him to get through in tough places. And he is higher than average power and strength with his weapon Apogee. And if you look at the amount of damage boxes as well, just to confirm that his stat line's even better, it actually has 21 hit boxes, which is higher than even the than uh, even Kador's. Butcher, who's only at 20. And for special abilities along the back, he's a clockwork vessel, so just like everybody else in the faction, he has he counts as a living model for generating souls, but if he's going down, the game's already over. His field marshal is shield guard. Now this includes him, so not only do all of his warjacks have it, so does he. So if you have somebody taking a shot that is somebody critical, he himself, if his armor is high enough, and it should be, he'll be able to take the damage as well. He can be repaired just like any other construct in the army. So again, if he takes a little bit of damage from shield guarding, a galvanizer or somebody else can just walk up and fix him up no problem like a warjack. And he has the apogee, and, and on his apogee, he has the ability stall built into it, with his, which is the continuous effect. Now, this does make the Warjack much easier to hit. However, at the same time, if he doesn't destroy the Warjack, it doesn't actually take away the Cortex. It doesn't give him stationary or anything like that. So he is going to still leave himself pretty exposed. It's not going to be as useful and very situational at best but it'll make the light warjacks that are defense 15 suddenly much easier to hit and hit needing anything but double ones. And as for his spell list, he's actually got a nice solid decent amount with only in, in the entire lineup one upkeep and that is actually Watcher. He has the he has the spell deceleration, so he actually protects his entire army from range attacks very well. A spell dissolution bolt, which is situational at best, but is going to be handy for taking out incorporeal models. He has positive charge, which is going to increase the attack, the attack and the damage output of not only his warjacks but anybody nearby. And they gave him purification, and with his magic ability of seven, along with the corollary increasing the control range, it is a very effective spell. And finally, we have Watcher, his lone upkeep. So whenever they get close, the Warjacks are going to be moving up. As long as they don't swing, the war the spell does not expire. And we'll go and finally, we have his feet. Sorry about that. And his feet actually is Clockwork Reinforcement, which is simply put, everybody gains plus four armor. In addition to that, anyone who has a repair skill check automatically passes. So you just start. So they can you can use this dual ways as a armor buff going in to prevent from charging, or when you just take the initial hit and you just feel like repairing everybody and you don't feel like rolling a bunch of skill checks, you can recover everybody fairly fast. And we'll go and we'll go over. For, we'll come back to him once we go over the three models. Now. Here we have our medium infantry units, the Eradicator, the Reciprocator, and the Perforator. All three are very similar. They're all speed 5, 
They're all a Mat 7, they're all Rat 5, but it is their equipment that define that makes them different. Once again, all of them are Defense 12. First, we'll start with the Reciprocator, since War Room has them up already. And unlike the other two, who are both Armor 15 base, he has Armor 16 base because of the shield. On top of that, his weapon is a protium pole arm, so he already has reach, and as you expect with that big huge shield there, he has the shield walled order, and his abilities for his melee attacks are both empowered attack and set defense. So the entire unit chooses one of those two. Uh, uh, most people are going to usually stick to set defense until he, uh, they're actually getting ready to charge, or they've just taken a charge, in which case they switch over to empowered attack and increase the damage output for that single swing from 12 to a 14. Now, that combined with positive charge can easily increase that up to a PS16. And, as you can guess, that is going to be mighty tough. Not only that, but then you have his feet. For, on top of shield wall, you get 20, plus 4 for 24. The only downside to it, though, is because shield wall is in order, you are reduced to only to moving 5 inches a turn. And it can't be used on the charge as well. So they're a very defensive unit, but without proper use of shield wall, they can be slowed down very quickly from uh, an inexperienced player. It takes a little bit of finesse with them. And as you can tell, they are going to be 8 hitboxes, so is everybody else. Next up, we have the guy on the left, who is the Eradicator. And for his weapons, he actually carries two of them with him. And as you can see here, just like before, he has PS12. But he has what's called the Protium Buckler. And as implied by the Buckler, there is a shield involved once again. So the Arm 15 is misleading. Now, that being said, they are a much more offensive unit in comparison to the Reciprocators, who... Hatton, which instead of just walking up, they actually have sidestep, and their variable melee options are accuracy, so they'll be mat 9 effectively, or they can get shields up for gaining buckler. And since they have two of the weapons, they will become armor 17, not just, no, not just arm 15, 16 or 15. So remember that there are two of them, so it actually improves by two. That being said, they can actually run the whole way in and you set that up. So they are a much faster unit, but they lack reach. But once again, their ability to charge in and uh, hit higher defense models than most of the army, even just by a little bit more, does help them out. Finally, we have the perforators here, who actually, as you can see on the arm here, has a small has a set of javelins there, along with a knife. It's a, or a blade that's hit in and under the arm, and some of the other models actually have it uh, switching the hands. So they actually can uh, switch uh, hands in order to uh, engage in melee, as per their fluff. And once again, arm 15. Now, their um, protean javelins are very short range, with only a range 6 and pow 6. Normally you'd stare and go, why bother with these guys? Well, there's a few reasons. One is the assault order, which means that they're going to when they charge they can use that as the as the order instead of the normal charge move in which case they will get to use both their gun and their blade even if they fail but if they note if they fail they must take a shot at um, at the one that they charged so if and whoever they declare their target they have to move to they have to move towards in some way and may actually make an attempt they can't just move whichever way left and right they have to actually make the attempt to get there and their variable is stuck to their ranged weapon, so their melee weapon will not benefit. So the empowered attack, which will not help, is going will not benefit at all. But the other option is snipe, so they do have increase it to range 10, or they become POW 8. Now here's the icing on the cake for them, and that is protean javelin, which is armor piercing, and that means that any of the any medium, large, or huge base models. They will half the ats of the arm of the base armor. So that means that an arm 19 uh, colossal will suddenly become armor 10, which will suddenly result in a just a minus four or a minus two. And with empowered attack, you're going to put a lot of hurt with five of those guys. And against small bases, you'll get a plus two damage bonus, which increases from an eight from a normal 6 with empowered attack included makes them into a 10 but it's rather wasted on small bases unless you're going for the uh, caster assassination 
Otherwise, these guys are meant to go after mediums, larges, warjacks, anyone who's easy to hit because their rat is a five and it is the highest rat that the entire army currently has without debuffs from flare and such. Now, as far as the synergy between Father Lucant and all three of them, Father Lucant actually prefers these guys over any of the others simply because of the fact that he is able to actually move in, his feet repair can help, help them negate any of the damage that they sustained, though only on a per model basis, so if you don't have enough repair guys, you have to choose wisely on that. And on top of that, you have the spells such as Deceleration as well as the Feet, which will increase the armor and defense, which is natural, which is not necessarily uh, heard of in Convergence, along with the fact that, again, their armor, their multi-wound infantry models, so you're going to be dealing, you're going to have to, you have to try to crack their armor very tough. Only a uh, heavy warjack designed for melee will really destroy them, along with maybe a few other weapon masters, such as the butcher, for example. Otherwise, the synergy between all of them, he can protect them, and in turn, the Eradicators can get to the front lines first, along with the Reciprocators second, and the Perforators can easily finish the job on any large bases as well. And that's just simply an example. There are numerous combinations and setups you can do with them as well. And on top of that, don't forget about positive char the spell Positive Charge to set it to set it up for attacks, as well as Watcher on the Warjacks. So, all, overall, between all of them, they are very tough unit. To, they're very tough army to crack when they're set up this way. Uh, that's enough for now. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it in this brief overview, and uh, see you later.